that which is in the Torah, many from them. They, uh, to go by what was revealed in the Torah. To go by what is revealed in the Torah. So these two, these two, these two, we shall follow these two, right, inshallah, for a reason. So these two, Shah Muhammad Aman Hafiz Rahimahullah, he said that Athani. Ashhur, that the second one is more prevalent. The second one is more prevalent. Meaning someone that was sent tayyip, to revive that was before him. Right? He said, well I can, but in the first definition, he said, يُؤْخَذْ عَلَيْهِ الْقَوْلُ بِأَنَّهُ لَمْ يُؤْمَرْ بِتَبْلِيغِهِ he said, for the second statement, we will understand that he was not commanded to convey it. He said, at tablighu at da'wa, wa da'wa, wal islah, wajibu rusul, wajibu al-anbiya, wajibu atba'ihim. He's making now why the second point is more of prevalency. He said, because that calling to Allah and conveying the message of Allah wa islah and likewise rectification bringing about rectification it is an obligation upon the prophets calling to Allah conveying the message of Allah wa islah and bringing about rectification wajibur rusul it is the obligation of the prophets. Wawajibul anbiya, and it is the obligation of the the messen the prophets and the messengers. And in likewise, wawajibu atbaihim, and it is the obligation of those who follow them. Those who follow them. And now here, the statement here of Shaykh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, it is important because he want to show you why the second definition of a prophet is what to be taken. Right? Because the first one talks about he is not commanded to convey it. But Amma, the other one is to convey and follow and, and, and rule by what was before him. Right? But the first definition was what? He was not commanded to convey the second definition is that he is not receiving something new, but he will implement and convey and revive what was before him. Right? What was before him. Now he said that calling to Allah, what tabligh wal islah, calling to Allah, and bringing about rectification, and likewise conveying the risala. These are from the obligations of the prophets and messengers. And those who follow the prophets and messengers. That's the obligations. Now he mentioned Hafid Rahimahullah. And he say, 
فَإِنَّ أَتْبَاعِهِمْ And the followers of the messengers and the prophets مُكَلَّفُونَ بِالْإِسْلَاحِ It is they are duty bounded to be what? To bring about rectification. Those who are the atba'u rusul they it is an obligation upon them to do what? To bring about islah. To bring about rectification. وَالنُّسْحُ لِلَّهِ And to have sincerity or a sincere advice with Allah. وَلِكِتَابِهِ With a sincerity with the book of Allah. وَلِرَسُولِهِ And the messenger of Allah. طَيِّبْ وَلِأَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَامَّتِهِمْ And having the sincere advice with the common believers and likewise the the leaders the elite of them meaning the ulama and the umara to have sincere advice for them طيب. so one of the ways of having a sincere advice for the prophets is to convey what they have left out what they have left off meaning what they have yani a uh, left behind that's the word what they have left behind barakallahu feek what they have left behind madha qala an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam ballighu anni walaw bi ayah convey from me convey from me even if it is a verse so you look at this takallufat this duty bound that for the atba'ur rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam it is also from them to bring about islah rectification when the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked who are the ghuraba who are the ghuraba tuba lil ghuraba right and they ask who are the ghuraba who are the strangers he say alladhina yuslihuna ma afsada nas min ba'di min sunnati those who are rectified or those who are rectifying what the people have corrupted after me from my sunnah shuf those who rectified so the islah the rectification barakallah fikum it is from the takallufat of the atba'ur rusul alayhim as-salatu was-salam now the shaykh hafizahullah he mentioned rahimahullah he say wa da'watu ila allah in calling to allah idha kana lil ulama if it is if it is an obligation upon the scholars وَهُمْ وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ In them they are the inheritors of the prophets. Shuf, look at the angle. If calling to Allah is an obligation upon the scholars. Right? Just like Shaykh al-Ba'adhi rahimahullah mentioned that what is right, the rights of the scholar and what is the rights of a non-scholar. The rights of the scholar is to clarify the matters. The rights of the non-scholars is to ask the scholar. So the scholar will do what? It's an obligation for him to clarify the matters. So he say here, Rahimahullah, إِذَا كَانَ لِلْعُلَمَاءِ If it is an obligation for the scholars, who are the scholars? The Prophet Ali Salatu was salam, وَصَفَ لَنَا الْعُلَمَاءِ He has described to us who are the ulama. He say, the ulama وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ They are the inheritors of the prophets and messengers alayhim salatu was salam. Shuf, and the messenger in the same hadith defined for us what was that which the ulama inherited from him. Lam yurathu ad-dinar wa ad-dirham. They did not inherit it from the messenger or the prophets and the messengers. It is not dinar or dirham that will you will inherit it from them. Walakin ash al-ilm. The knowledge is that which. Is barakallah the, the scholars they will inherit it from the from the prophets and messengers alayhim salatu was salam. So therefore, Ida Kamalil Ulama wa hum waratul and biya. He say you kalifuna hada at taklif fal anbiya min babil ula. If the obligation or conveying calling to Allah is an obligation upon the scholars. Then without a doubt, conveying and calling to Allah is surely an obligation upon the prophets. Because who has a daraja that is higher? Is it the ulama or the prophets? Huh? The prophets. 
So if it is an obligation upon the scholars to call to Allah, if it is an obligation, then barakallah fikum let alone the, the prophets. So see how Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami is aiding us to understand that the prophets, they are also what? Being commanded to, to convey. They are commanded to convey. But they are not conveying nothing that is new. But rather they are conveying that which was before them. Before them. Naam, he went to say, Hafizahu rahimahullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy, have mercy upon Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami and all of his teachers and students and those who are taking the path of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila yawm al naqahu. Amin. So he say, Hafizahu rahimahullah, he say, so therefore, fal anbiya min babil awla, min babil ula, so therefore the prophets, they are. Yani, to be mentioned first and foremost. He say, لِذَلِكَ He say, this is why a ta'rifu awwal the first definition, he say, it is the definition that is to be taken. And this is the definition that when you look at the proofs and evidences and the rational, that this is, alhamdulillah, what is to be taken in consideration. Naam. So Shaykh Salih al-Fawdan Hafizahullah, he went to say, he said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was declared a prophet and he was of age of, in the age of 40. I mean he was 40 years old. He was Ala Rasi al Arba'in. He was 40 years old. He was 40 years old. So Muhammad Aman al Jami mentioned something that is very particular in this issue. He said, Wulahu min al Umr, and he has of a year, Hina to Wafa. When he died, he was 63 years old. And he mentioned, Hafidahullah, that from them is that he lived to be 40. Qabla an nubuwa, forty years before he was made a prophet. Li'annahu lam yubath, because no one was sent. He say here, illa ba'da al arba'in, except after forty years. And he mentioned this important point. Wa hadhihi sunnatullah fi man yabathuhum, and this is the way of Allah unto those that He sent. The sunnah of Allah that most of the prophet that he sent, he sent them at the age of 40. He sent them at the age of 40. And there is barakallah fi falamma balagha. Right? When he reached his strength, his maturity, meaning talking to Musa, that we sent him on to Fir'aun. And the scholars they have, like Ibn Kathir and others, Mention about Barakallah from the age of 40. Because of at 40, this is the time when the person start gaining maturity. And alhamdulillah, just in the intellectual, in the rational perspective, alhamdulillah for those of us that has reached 40, we can surely see, alhamdulillah, that how your temper or how the way that you were doing things before you were 40, and when you reach 40, how you are doing things, way different. The individual drive it and he is 25, wait for him when he'll turn 45. Seriously, the person like very argumentative, like bumping head, he like to clash in. Give him till he reach 40 and he start going down the drain. He will think differently, alhamdulillah. Now he will have more maturity in how he look at things. He will not be hasty in his decision no more. He will think about things that Barakallah Fikum before 40. He will not have time to think about those things. He might have the same responsibility. But the thought process is a different stage. Wait till you reach 40. 
الله يبارك فيكم